Well, Phil is at it again. So today we're going to have to try to seal up a leak on the main hydraulic hydrostatic pumps. If you've ever been into one of these on a 250 or anything similar, an S250 or anything related to Bobcat, you're going to know that there's these big old fittings on the actual hydrostatic pump itself. The O-ring side threads into the hydrostat, and then this side right here connects to the big feed hoses that go out to your uh, drive motors. These guys, about 120 bucks a piece from Bobcat. They got an O-ring flange up here on the top, and then they've got like a 16 JIC fitting down here below. Now, problem lies in that they're extremely rigid. This one come off a burnt machine, so no, I'm not going to try to reuse it. Can't get them to seal up right. <clears throat> Flare seal makes this little cup right here that will actually set on and create yourself a new sealing surface in a lot of cases. I'm hoping that this will fit. What this is is a chunk of aluminum or copper. It's impregnated with uh, some kind of like hard gasket making seal. This is the same stuff that my Cummins gaskets are uh, coated with. And they work really, really well. These things are not cheap. They're about 10, 15 bucks a piece in some cases. If you go on the internet, look for flare tight or flare seal, and you'll probably find them. I found a whole bunch of them for like the 8 and the 6 JICs, and at that point, come on, the fitting's cheap enough, just replace the fitting. But for these big old honkers, that fitting right there alone from Bobcat's about 170 bucks. And then a smaller little equivalent, the one on top, uh, they want about the same price for it too. I mean, come on, Parker or Weatherhead is probably making these things for a fraction of the cost. It's just finding the part number. So if you're good at a hydraulic shop, track these things down, save you a lot of money. <clears throat> the big one here is an inch and three eighths. It takes an inch and three eighths socket to get it off. Or if you're using a line wrench, uh, problem is is up inside the Bobcat, and I'll show you here in a second. There's not enough room for these for a big old hefty wrench of an inch and three eighths to fit up in there. So, quick tip: go to Tractor Supply. They've got these Job Smart ones for about 20 bucks a piece. Cut the thing in half with a cutoff saw. Now you got a slugging wrench. That's what we used to call slugging wrench. Sort of taper the end a little bit. You can get it in there and you can start whacking on with a hammer. It's cheap enough to where you're not blowing up a snap-on or one of those guys. Trust me, I like snap-on a Mac all day long, but there's some things that uh, it's better off to go look somewhere else for. Harbor Freight? Yeah. The Harbor Freight in my area, they want to sell you the entire roll for 50 bucks. It's like, I don't need the other inches on either side. I just need an inch and three-eighths, inch and a half, and a couple other ones like that for a specific application. So, your lines themselves, the flare fitting on there is going to be an inch and a half. And then your actual fitting, the big one's going to be an inch and three-eighths. And your smaller one here, I want to say, uh, that's an inch, inch and a half on it as well. Yep, inch and a half. Socket will take care of what's on the actual hydrostat. The wrench is what you're going to need to get those big flare fittings off. So, I'm going to dive into this real quick and see what kind of bath I can take in hydraulic fluid again. Alright, for a little perspective as to where we're going, lift your cab up. Slide straight on back in here into the bowels of the machine. The two fittings we're talking about are right here. These big honkers here. <coughs> Alright, your rod here is what actually activates your hydrostats moving back and forth. But in order to get to where I gotta go, I'm gonna have to take these arms off here. Or slide it up out of the way at least so I can get into this fitting right here. So, quick way to do this is just make yourself a line mark across the face of it, kind of where your nuts are. Sort of the best I can do for now. 9 16 or 14 mil is the bolts for your actual arm here. And then, like I said, an inch and a half on the big flare fittings. And then you got an inch and a half and inch and three eighths down there. Problem associated with this, and I'm going to chalk this up to Bobcat's engineers. See how close these fittings are together? 
you can't get a wrench in there. So how in the world do they expect you to get them tight enough? This is why I said you're going to have to really, pretty much going to have to sacrifice a wrench to get it cut off here in the middle so you can actually get up into this well right here and work this thing. And even then you can only get a little bit on it. Uh, I've used a large expandable or like a crescent style wrench. The one I've got is probably 100 years old, made by Buffalo Tool. And it actually has kind of an S-curve handle to it. Really good for kind of getting over to the side and you can tap it with a hammer. I don't like adjustable wrenches, crescent wrenches. They will loosen up and the flex that's in the jaw will loosen up and start rounding these fittings off. Case in point, you can kind of see maybe down here. Somebody's already done that. There's a nice gouge in this one down here. Dude, $120 a hose. I don't want to have to replace this thing because it runs out through the bowels and over to the track motor. Not, not fun at all. So, let's see if I can pop this one loose. There are huge fittings in there, a pain in the rear to get lined back up again. Okay, that one looks actually really good. Feel down in here and see what our ceiling surface feels like. Okay, this one might be a good candidate for the flare seal. I don't feel any imperfections. Careful when you're doing this because if you get a jagged edge, you might slice your finger open and it's not going to make a good end of the day. A little bit better. Try to tighten. Yeah, it might be just a little bit loose. We'll put a flare fit in that one too. See if we can't get back in the game with just a simple fix, not having to replace those whole big heavy dollar fittings here. I don't like working on greasy equipment. Yeah, that from coming from a guy who likes dozers. <laughs> yeah, there's your joke for the day. So let's make a slugging wrench. Okay, first seal, give it a shot. It just slides right over the nose. I guess it's kind of a suction. It's fitted a little bit to set in place. Let's see how bad this will set up in there. These big collars can be a real roll pain in the butt. And the actual fitting, the, the nipple back here, where it looks like it's collared to step in place. If you don't get that set in place just right, it's going to cause you a lot of trouble later on. Yep. That fits better. One sealed down. Let's go for number two. Typically your O-ring will seal the fitting. These flares have a tendency to get scarred sometimes. I don't quite like the way that one's fitting on there. Boy, once they go on, they don't come off. Alright, let's see if that'll work. Any information, the upper fitting is actually closer together than the lower one, so it makes it equally or harder than working that lower one over.
off to the races again. All right, so a big thank you to Mark Wisnant down at Upstate Equipment Repair and Rental. He turned me on to these little flare seal fittings, and uh, so far it's got that side tightened up and doing good. So the experiment worked, and it looks like I got another one in there. That top one on the other side probably could use one as well, but that drip I'm not too concerned about at the moment. I can go get some more seals and be into that in a few minutes. So. Hope my two or three days worth of aggravation has uh, turned into a 15 minute fix for you guys. So, till next time, take care.